In the last video, we got this junkyard 5.3 completely disassembled and then reassembled and dropped into the car. In this episode, we're going to try to make it run. So there are a few things that are missing here before we can actually get that done. The starter, fuel lines, carburetor, and ignition. Aside from that, we also have the serpentine belt drive, water pump, power steering, and a bunch of other little doodads like the entire cooling system. So let's go ahead and start knocking things out and we'll start with the carburetor. So for the fuel pressure regulator, I'm going to be reusing the same one that I used on the 383 big block, along with the bracket mount that sits underneath the carburetor. This is a Holly VR series regulator and it's the same style regulator that I used in my 73 Dodge Charger, 75 W100 turbo truck, the 383 big block Mopar that was in this car, and now it's going to be used in the 5.3. I've already set up the regulator with dash eight lines out to the carburetor we have a dash 8 supply line and a dash 10 return line so in order to get this onto the car we're going to need to remove this plate install some studs drop this on and then install the carburetor the regulator and fuel lines were installed without a hitch i didn't really have any problems since i was set up on that car before it really just bolted right back on as for the carburetor situation that might be a little bit trickier so right here on my bench i have three different carburetors a 650 gasoline carburetor a 750 e85 carburetor and a 600 1850 style carburetor and as you can see i've got all three apart and the reason for that is because i want the car to be kind of a dual fuel setup i want the car to be able to run on 91 as well as e85 which is no big deal because i have metering blocks for 91 and e85 so the metering blocks have been modified and recalibrated for a boosted application if you guys have watched my turbo carbureted tuning videos you'll understand what i'm talking about to make a long story short i think we can agree that a naturally aspirated carbureted tune is not the same as a turbocharged carbureted tune but I do want to use the same carburetor or at least the same main body for both applications. And I want to make it easy to go from 91 to E85 and then E85 back to 91. I already ran into this issue in my truck where I would run out of E85 halfway down the highway and there's no E85 anywhere to be found. I go in and I fill up on 91. Now my tune is completely off. The truck is chugging along. I have to pull over, rejet it keep driving but all the other circuits are still out of whack and with this car i don't want to deal with that instead i want to carry a second metering block that if i want to run on 91 i could just swap out the e85 metering block run on 91 and then when i want to go back to e85 i could just do the reverse so here is the carburetor fully installed as you can see we got like a million different colors the base plate is black these plugs are purple the rear metering block is purple the front metering block is silver these fittings are blue and the whole rest of the carb is gold and silver so as you can see there's a hodgepodge of different parts but it's all just to get everything dialed in and then we're going to be swapping them out for hopefully matching parts but as for the specifics of the carburetor i went with the 72 front jet 75 rear jet 50 cc accelerator pumps front and rear and then a 40 nozzle front and rear with high flow screws and I believe when this car was in the Charger, I changed the high speed and low speed air bleeds, but I think I'm going to have to change those again once I get the car running. I think I went down from 65 to 55, and I think I'm gonna go back up to the 65 and maybe even go up to 75. So I just don't know yet. We're just gonna have to drive it and work out the tune as we go along. So we've got fuel, we've got induction, and now we need ignition. So let me show you what we're gonna do for that. So this is a Daytona Sensor Smart Spark LS, and this is the ignition system that we're gonna use in order to run a simple carburetor on an LS engine. So it's really just a harness and a computer. There's not a lot of wires. That's why I kind of love this system. I've used it on several LSs and it has always worked. So setting up the Smart Spark is actually pretty easy. It's basically just four plugs, cam sensor, crank sensor, driver side bank coils, passenger side bank coils, and we're pretty much good to go. That's all there, there is to it. So it's gonna take me about three minutes to hook this up. So let me go ahead and do that. So before I get this guy cranked over, I do need to install the starter cable. This is actually the factory starter wire that came with this engine when I first got it. The starter wire that I used on the truck is completely different, so that one won't work. So I've got this guy and then I've added a 10 gauge red wire. I've wrapped it in some painless loom. And then I added some heat shrink on the edges so it doesn't come apart. 
I need to put an eyelid right here on this end, and then I need to cut down this wire and install an eyelid on this side as well. So I've got the starter wiring wrapped around the engine right now. It's all hooked up, and all the battery cables and starter wires end up here at this starter solenoid. So later on when I start going to drag strips, I'll be able to use this to pass tech. Some of you guys might have noticed that the front cover was off, and that's because I was setting up the external oil filter, the oil filter adapter, and all the hoses. And what I was going to do was just fill up everything with oil before I started, so that way I don't have a chance of running dry on this engine. But when I started to crank this thing over, I started to realize that there was no oil coming up to the filter at all. I then disconnected this line to see if I had oil coming out of the motor, and I had just a little dribble of oil, but not enough to create any kind of pressure, especially not to be able to climb this little hill right here. And mind you, I've already tested this oil pump on this engine. The only thing I changed was the oil pan and pickup, so that's where I started to look. As you can see, here's a custom pickup that I built in a prior video, but if you look closely, there are two holes right there on the right side. So in the LS, the oil goes up through the front, goes to the back, goes through the oil pan into the filter, and then goes back into the engine. So what I did to test this was I pulled the oil pan, grabbed the quart of oil in a cup, and just put it right here on the pickup tube. As soon as I used my priming tool, I had a grip of oil coming out of right there where it's supposed to, and the quart of oil that was in my hand was draining really really fast which means the oil pump was doing what it was supposed to do the problem was that it wasn't building any kind of pressure I've got it fairly close right now but you can still see that there's a little bit of a gap between the flange and my straight edge so if you look very very closely you'll see that there's a gap right there where you kind of see my finger and what was happening was that the oil pan gasket was being pressed here there and there but this side right here there had no tension and so there was nothing holding this up against the block like i said i've already got it somewhat close i'm swapping out the seal with one with a little more thicker silicone seal i'm going to bolt it back on the engine and hopefully this time around i can get some oil pressure all right so i've got it mostly back together i've got the oil cooler lines hooked back up and I've got the bolts at the back of the pan hooked up, but I don't have any of the bolts in the front, but that's not really gonna be an issue. I'm just trying to find out whether or not I can actually build pressure or not. So let's, let's go ahead and try it. It's already looking way better. I'm going to disconnect the line going into the engine and let's see how much oil comes out. So it looks like all of that's pretty good now. So I'm going to go ahead and put the front end back together, put the balancer on, and let's see if we can crank this guy over. All right, I've got the front end on here. I didn't put the balancer on because I think we're gonna change the accessory drive. So I'm just gonna risk it without running the balancer. There's always a risk that that little oil drive will fly out and then you'll run the engine without any oil. But I'm only gonna try to run it for a few seconds. I just wanna make sure it starts, it runs, and I don't hear any kind of knocking. I installed a little spacer plate and it has two open holes, one in the front, one in the back. And that's in case there's any kind of excessive flooding or whatever. And that'll basically just act like a big vacuum leak. So that way the engine revs up, stays running, runs lean, and then it'll turn off. I've jerry-rigged the ground cable. So that way it just hooks up right there on the block. And since my battery's in the back, I ran a cable from here all the way to the back. Like I mentioned, this is all just temporary. I just wanna make sure that it starts and it runs and it does what it needs to do. I hope it stays running for at least 10 or 15 seconds or so, so that way I can run around and check these exhaust ports. I believe this one is the one that we swapped out the piston or maybe it was that one. I don't remember, it was one of these two. I think maybe it was that one. But I'm gonna take a look at it. Maybe I'll just leave the camera running, I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and finally start it. Let's hope that the first time that this thing runs isn't going to be the last time that it runs. So wish me luck. I think that was a success. And there you have it. It actually does run. 
and most of the cylinders seem to run pretty good and I didn't hear any obvious misfires so it looks like we're on the right track in the next episode we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of this back together and see if we can actually get this thing to move I will see you guys all in the next one Night Rancher signing out